Good morning. It's the Valley Girl. Coco and I made a coffee run before our interview with Steve Jurvetson. It was super early, but mostly we needed the caffeine boost to keep up with his rapid fire intelligence. He is smart. Then I rehearsed a little to stay on my toes. <laughs> How are you doing today, Steve? Great. Valley Girl, I'm doing very well, thank you. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> What's your favorite movie? It's a good one. So. Valley Girl time. It's Valley Girl time. Valley Girl. That's right. Valley Girl. Valley Girl. Valley Girl. Valley girl. Valley girl. Come to your world. Your world. I'm a Valley Girl. Valley Girl. Valley Girl. Valley Girl. It's your world. 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 Totally. <laughs> Welcome, Steve Jurgensen. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> well, so how are you doing today? Just peachy. Actually, I thought before we would we started, I thought we should do some stretches. Yes. Do you have a favorite stretch? Um, you know, before your interviews. Ah. Uh, uh... No, I don't have time to do the other leg. Like, oh, that's hard. Yeah, because then kind of it. So tell me, what does a venture capitalist do? Hmm. Well, there's different ways to answer that. At one level, we help try to spot and invest in great entrepreneurs that want to change the world, that have a passion and a desire to do great things. The best part of the day is, you know, when some bright eyed team comes in, you don't know if their next job's in Wozniak trying to start the next Apple or if they're just a couple of cranks that, uh, you know, a little delusional. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's not entirely clear which of the two it is. And that's sort of the big mission statement is to try to uh, make a difference by helping people that are usually young people that are trying to start new companies uh, achieve their dreams. Tell me about your life. How did you get to where you are now? What, where did you begin? <laughs> I began, I think, in my mom. Yeah. Uh, and that was in Arizona. And then okay. I went to Texas in high school years, or grade school and high school were all in Texas. But... Do you have a Texas drawl sometimes? Nah. Nah? <laughs> I, I, I... And then you just met up with DFJ or you worked? No, no, yeah. There were some other... There were some other little, yeah. little So I did, I did a <laughs> electrical engineering undergraduate degree and then a master's in that. And worked at Hewlett Packard doing chip design like an R&D geek. And then I changed gears entirely and went to Bain and Company, which is a management oh. consulting firm up in San Francisco. Then I went to business school again back at Stanford and uh, worked a summer job at Apple and Next separate. I sort of split the summer up. And what does this. Next do? That was a company that used to be run by Steve Jobs in independent. It got since then, it got acquired by Apple. And then I joined DHA, which was called Draper Associates at the time in 1995, right after business school. And I've been there ever since. No way. Way. Then so you're like back. a super, super genius. No, I don't know about that. Yes. <laughs> He's a super genius. Um, so do you enjoy being a venture capitalist? Oh yeah. It's way cool. It's way cool. Way cool. Yeah. Way. Way. Wow. Yeah. Way. Wow. So what do you like most about it? I like most about it the diversity of things you can learn about. Five years ago, I would never have guessed that I'd be looking at projects in synthetic biology, which is a weird subject we can get into if you want. And then <laughs> like five years before that, I was looking at nanotech. And then, you know, 10 years ago, this whole consumer internet boom. And from just a learning perspective, you get a perspective on all of these incredibly uh, cool things coming down the pipe. And for geeks, uh, especially, uh, it's all about technology. I like too. that you're very yes. open about your, yes, your yes. geekness. Yes, yes, it's, it's a point of pride. I'm very open about my valley girlness. <laughs> it's important to know who, who you are and to own it and, and run with it, yes. So do you have an area that you particularly love? But I find that I get excited about learning more about the technology that's starting new business models as opposed to what's a new business model in the abstract. Oh, okay. So for example, synthetic biology, which I've mentioned in passing, which is really funky. This is where scientists are now able for the first time ever to literally redesign life forms from scratch and treat them like computer programs. So <laughs> now these things can be rewritten because the code of life is a bunch of A's, G's, and C's, the genetic you know, makeup of DNA. In the past, it was all a really complex molecule that we didn't have the chemistry or techniques to manipulate other than cut and paste. So the history of biotech has been you know, snip things that are found in nature, recombine them in interesting ways, and, and do some pretty amazing stuff, and some big breakthroughs in big industries. Cool you could make a unicorn. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so, Steve, if you had one free day, totally free day, no internet, no phone, and there was nothing nagging you to get done, what mm. would you do? Mm. Only one day? 
one day. Yeah. But so, you can teleport places. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So the idea just got better and better. <laughs> okay. With teleportation, I would immediately go to the International Space Station because getting there and back is pretty darn dangerous, not oh, to yeah. mention the Ethel and Russian, and, and it's, you could just go to the Russian program to do it, and it take months. You know, the, the list started with a very simplistic notion of what I did on Saturday, and then <laughs> it built up to, wow, that would be awesome. Tell me about your Saturday. Oh, I went off to a place in the middle of nowhere, east of Modesto, and with my son and a bunch of other wackos like me, and we launched rockets all day. Do they explode? Some of them do, yeah. Rockets sound so cool. Are they like your favorite thing in the whole world? Favorite hobby. Favorite hobby. Close, it's closely tied with photography. And so I combine the two. I take pictures of rockets launching while I'm So you're like a rocket man. <laughs> so what do you think of Britney Spears? Yes, I think about her a lot. Yeah, I know. No, I, I know. Yes, I do. <laughs> I know. I think about her all the time. Okay, I have five quickies for you. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Don't scare me. What's your guilty pleasure? I like red wine. Uh, okay. I don't know if it's guilty. I try to have a glass each day. Okay. What's your biggest pet peeve? People who believe in just completely whack things. <laughs> Who's your childhood crush? See, that what's, what's sick is just Steve Jobs jumped to mind, but not in, the, <laughs> in a loving way. But I was just thinking, oh, he's my hero. He's the guy I thought about the most. So what was the last thing you bought on the internet? So I got a really cool lens, a long lens, for shooting uh, birds, hawks, and uh, rockets. Oh, wow. It's my favorite subject. What's your favorite song to sing in the shower? Oh, uh, songs I make up, you know, random show tunes or other, you know, yeah. cheesy lyric, I mean, cheesy recognizable tunes, you know, or just some random rhyming thing or a rap or something. Coco, will you please bring me the fluff cup? Time for the fluff cup. Yay! Okay, you tell me when. Go. Estonia, it's a country in the, the Baltics next to yes. Finland. SpongeBob, SquarePants, a cartoon character. Strawberry, it's a fruit for... Carnation, a flower, Tom Cruise, an actor, <laughs> kind of a weird dude in Scientology, interwoven, a company that does uh, web process control, Skype, a wonderful peer-to-peer -peer telephone program, golf ball rocket, that's when you put the golf ball on a rocket, you launch it up and it becomes stable. The J Curve is the early uh, return in venture fund before it goes up. It's also a really cool blog on Blogger. Nanotech, technology of the really small, the uh, objects of one billion of a meter. Supersonic, things go faster than the speed of sound. And lastly, Coco, right there. Yeah! That was the fastest. Plus, have we ever experienced? <laughs> okay. I'm like the Valley Girl. And I'm like Steve Jurvetson. <laughs>